Dave Parody here. In this video, I want to show you the thinking behind one of the visuals that I teach in my financial viz courses that really always gets a very positive response. And it is creating multiple diverging bar charts to show variance. Let's take a look at this visual. Now, what we're seeing here is we're seeing a comparison of actual to budget and actual to last year. Something very, very common in a lot of financial presentations or analysis. Everything you see here in this visual is one chart. It's not two charts. It's just one. And so there's a lot of planning and thinking that goes behind creating these sorts of effective visuals that you can use for financial analysis or financial reporting. Let me walk you through some of the thinking because it's really good to see how somebody else thinks through creating one of these visuals. Now, when it comes to thinking through this, it's really about planning. So when I take a look at the overall chart, I have to think about, okay, so a stacked bar chart is what I'm gonna use. That means I have to think from left to right. Every segment of the bar chart I have to think through. So there's obviously the category labels on the left that's going to be set by the chart that's there. Then I need to think, okay, so on the left side of the first baseline are gonna be the negative bars, if it's a negative variance. And on the right side, they're positive bars. And I need a separator space between the two sets of bars. And I've got, again, the negative bars on the left side of the second baseline and the positive bars on the right side of the baseline. Now, when I'm thinking about a bar for any particular row, it's either going to have a value of positive, in which, which case I'm going to have a spacer bar, which means it's a, an invisible segment, an invisible segment that takes the place of what would be a negative bar so that the positive bar starts at the baseline. And the positive bar isn't necessarily going to be the longest one, so I'm going to likely need a spacer after it so that I can line up the separator, and then the next set of bars are all going to line up. If it's negative, well, I'm going to have that spacer that isn't going to take up the full space. I'm going to have my negative bar, but then the second spacer, spacer two, is going to take up the full space of where the positive bar would be. So I'm thinking through this and thinking about all the different data series I'm going to need in order to properly segment every one of these bars and make sure that I've taken into account the different situations. So when I actually take a look at all the data series that are gonna go into that stacked bar chart, I'm gonna have a total of nine of them. I'm going to have spacer and negative bar value on the left side of that first baseline then the positive bar value and spacer two. Again, I'm gonna to have to calculate when each of those is used. Those are the first four. Then I've got my spacer three. That's my separator that's gonna be consistent. And then I've got the same set of four for the second set of bars. So I'm thinking through and it's like, okay, so I've got nine of these data series. Now I'm gonna to have to add on four series of labels. I want to custom format the labels, the data labels for the negative and positive bars, both the first set and the second set. There's a total of four there. And then I'm going to have three more data series. Data series to create the baselines, baseline one and two. Those are data series and the headers above to describe, well, what are these variants was showing above the first set and the second set? Those are going to be scatter with straight lines type of charts. So I'm actually combining two different types of charts here, the stack bar chart and the scatter with straight line charts, putting them together. So let's go back to our visual here and see what does this actually look like. So here's our visual. Let me start pointing out where we're seeing these different data series or sets of information. So it starts with our category labels. That's pretty standard in any sort of a bar chart or stacked bar chart. Then in this area here to the left of that first baseline, that's where I'm going to have my spacer one and my negative bar number one, if it's negative. On the right side, I'm going to have the positive bar and spacer two. Now, I'm always going to have the spacer. It's just a matter of is it taking up the full space or only part of it. Then I have my separator between the two. Now, I've labeled that at the bottom here, but it goes in every single one of these rows. I have those four spacer and bar pair in my second set of bars. So those are the nine data series that are making up that stacked bar chart. Then I have my labels. So I have four series of labels, one for each of the potential bars that I have. 
the negative and positive for the first set, the negative and positive for the second set. Then I have at the top here, I have my headers. These are data labels that I've added to an invisible line. So in addition to the invisible spacers, I also have an invisible line allows me to position those headers right above the baseline. And then down at the bottom here, I have my baselines. The baselines are lines drawn on the chart. So all of these data series and label series combine to create this chart after some careful planning and thinking through. And you know, what I'm really doing here is I'm leveraging the advanced Excel chart skills that I teach in my financial biz courses to create this very effective visual. You know, four categories here. First of all, using invisible elements to position visible elements. Notice I used those spacer segments. Second set where you're never gonna see them, but they are there for a purpose. The purpose is to position the visible elements that you are going to see. Second is multiple data series. In fact, I have a dozen data series and then four more, which aren't data series, but they're series for labels. Why do I have so many? Because each one has one specific purpose and one purpose only. That allows me to format them. It also allows the calculations to be much easier because I know each data series has only one purpose. Does this take a little more time to set up? Yeah, sure it does. But here's the thing. When you set up everything that is driven from the data table, it's so much easier to update and reuse this chart in the future. Custom labeling. This allows me to control exactly how the label looks. I don't give this control over to the software, over to Excel. I want to control that. That's why I use custom labels. And then finally, as I said, I combine different chart types, a stack bar chart and a scatter with straight lines here to create an effective visual that is going to be used for analysis and for reporting. This has been interesting to you if you want to explore how your organization, your team can create more effective visuals using the tool you already have, Excel. Just go to the website, financialviz.com. Get in touch and we can talk about how my customized courses can help your team to create these sorts of effective visuals.